Welcome to the Michigan Runner Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Okay, hello everyone. This is Gary Morgan with the Michigan Runner. Well, I'm here in Portland at the World Indoor Championship. Well, they have a big venue set up here at Pioneer Square. A band is playing. We just had the opening press conference with uh, all, the, uh, all the leaders of it, with uh, Vin Lanana and uh, Max Siegel, USATF CEO, Ashton Eaton, and a few other athletes. But we're right here in Pioneer Square to celebrate this event for the weekend. Medal winners will be coming over here. And you can see it's all decked out with Portland 2016. And uh, we'll show you a few things and a few things around this city that's all going on here with the World Indoor Championships here in Portland, Oregon. Ah, oh, you know, Brienne is the one that stole the show, and I'm really happy and proud about that, and I'm proud of her. And uh, I was just finishing it off for the family, you know, and finishing it off for the hometown crowd. It would be cool to get the world record, but uh, maybe that's why they're difficult. <laughs> Don't happen very often. Ashton, were you saying something to the crowd as you went around? It almost looked like you were talking to them. As I was running? I'm going to victory lap. Oh, I was just saying hey. Yeah. yeah, thanks for coming out. It looked like they were giving you a standing O all the way around. Yeah, you know, I think the multi-event athletes get that quite a bit, and maybe it's because I was there, but... Most every meet I've been at, the multi van athletes get it. You know what? The thousand felt brutal. That was like the hardest one I ever ran. You know, Curtis Beach, real fast guy. He's like, I'm gonna come through in 27, 56, because he wanted to get a medal. And uh, I was like, all right. And when he came through in 30 seconds on that first 200, I was like, we're in trouble because that felt like a 26. <laughs> so uh, it was a tough race. I don't know why. Maybe just. We were all tired, who knows, but uh, I was tired and thinking, you know what, count this as training. <laughs> Ash, we talked about Harry a little bit. I mean, this is huge for him. First year we've had two gold medalists in one meet. You know, since the very first day that Harry was at practice as our coach, he was there an hour early, hour and 15 minutes early. Ever since then, he's been at every single practice an hour and 15 minutes early, setting up, thinking about the events we're gonna do, um, preparing for, you know, thinking about what we did the day before, what we're gonna do the next day. The guy is incredible, you know, he's been in the sport for 50 years. Every time we go somewhere, he knows everyone. And uh, I don't know, maybe he's the glue, you know what I mean? He's the glue that's keeping us together, physically, mentally, getting us to these championships in a confident manner, physically and mentally. Yeah, the guys, I mean, I think it'll be sad when he's done. Ash, it's still a long time. Thank you. But what does this do? I think it's good for both of our confidences. Um, and you know what? Competition really highlights your mistakes, which is essentially as a multi event athlete, maybe any athlete, it's a, kind of about who makes the fewest mistakes, you know? And so we both, Brand, Brand made a lot fewer mistakes. But uh, for me, I made some mistakes, and I go back to training and work on them and try to rectify them. And uh, for her, I suppose she continues on the same path. Yeah. It can be, of course. We believe so. And we'll try everything we can to see if it can happen. Yeah? You had a really good meet, Yeah, yeah you know what? Like, in the end, I'm glad I just laid it all out there. That was the best result I could have produced over the two days. The only hard part was the hurdles. I lost a lot of points there. Um, but I never thought that effort would produce 229. I ran as hard as I could, as hard as I ran 223 a couple of years ago. Um, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy I gave it all. I would rather get fourth with that effort than anything higher with a mediocre effort. So I'm just happy to be here. And with this crowd, track town, like it's just a fun experience. So. Full energy from the crowd at all during 
Oh yeah, for sure. Like I think if the crowd wasn't there, I would have gotten like three or four or five seconds less. You know, just wearing USA, trying to represent well, giving the crowd something to be proud of. That's all I was after. It looked like they were standing as, as you guys would go past. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I was going as hard as I could, so. What did you think of Ashton? Oh, I mean, it's always fun competing with Ashton. Like, you know, he's always consistent. I think this was like an average performance for him, and it was still better than anyone else has done in history. Like, had he not had performances higher, it still would have been the world record, which is like crazy, and he's so easygoing, so much fun to compete with, and you see, competing with him, you see all the reasons why he's so good beyond just natural athletic ability. Works hard, excellent mindset, and he just loves the competition, and loves when everyone else does well too, so it's amazing for people. You almost feel like it's not fair to be a decathlete. No, no, I mean, no, not at all. I mean, I, as much as I would like to get medals and be number one, like it's a huge motivating factor, I'm just happy to have the chance to be here and wear the USA and just have the chance to be in my mid-20s and compete in track and field. Like, a lot of my other friends have awesome jobs, but, you know, if they had a chance, they would probably be doing track. So I'm just happy to wake up every day, go out and train, and that's the dream. Like, I'm already ahead of the game, and I'm loving it, so. Curtis, where do you think this puts you for the Olympic trials and then going to Rio? You know, I don't know. I think, I think it's good to have this international format experience. So when I go to Rio, I'll have experience it, and it'll be more normal. Um, you know, it'll still be hard to make it. There's still a lot of great athletes out there. So I think having this experience and competing with guys like Ashton will definitely make me better on the track and certainly off. You said you bought your hurdles. You know, it's consistently better. I don't know what happened. I hit the third hurdle hard, came off the second hurdle bad. I'm just glad I stayed on my feet. You know, I, I'll have to look at the film and see what happened, but I was not expecting that. So, yeah, it definitely cost me. It cost me like 80 or more points. You know, that's getting close to second. So uh, that's why I lost it. But every other event, it was my best day one I've ever had. Everything else was near a PR. And, you know, in a multi, there's always going to be an event like that. And I just had to bounce back and give it my all, regardless of what happens before. So that's what it's all about. Comebacks. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll be fine. Um, I'm just ready to take a break, you know, for a week or two and then uh, reset, get into some hard training and then get into decathlon mode. But it's an amazing indoor season and um, I'll be ready when it comes time to Rio. You're, you're remembered um, for an, a consummate act of sportsmanship on the 2012 Olympic Trials yeah. when you waved Ashton Young through the world record. Um, how has that act um, lived with you? How has that influenced your life? How are people responding to you? You know, I never really knew the consequences of it in the moment. I just kind of like did it and didn't really know. And then when I got interviewed afterwards, they kept asking me about that. I was like, why are you talking? I, I didn't realize the effect it would have, but I think it is a symbol to commemorate what the decathlon's all about. It's about everybody pulling each other along for everyone's best performance. And that's what I'm most proud of in that moment. And um, you know, I'm not sure if Ashton really wanted that or not, but like, you know, it's it's a little bit what I'm known for now and you know I'd like to be known for things that I do. But um, you know in the end like I'm glad that it represents the decathlon well and that's the most important part. Beach decathlon fourth place beach Decathlon, fourth place, beach.
see the Ukrainian girl coming across in 220 something, but I couldn't in my mind even figure out if that was 10 seconds. Like literally, I, uh, yeah, I was just like, it was all a blur. Great, great. What is? What does it mean to get the first global title and for Rio? Yeah, um, I think mostly for Rio, this shows me where I am. Um, I, we know what I need to work on. I'm not rust proof in all of these events yet. So now I just have to figure out how to iron those out. And again, like the, the gold medal is great, but I'm most proud of myself for um, executing this competition mentally the way that we've planned it. Please go. You guys can ask more questions in the press conference. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm glad to be doing this with somebody. You know, I'm by myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Williams and Nwaba. Tell me about your day. Um, day was great. Started off with a season's best in my hurdles. Um, 8.43. Um, went into high jump and did pretty good. I was really excited with my 182 bar that I made. Um, big PR and shot put on my first throw, so that was really exciting. Um, set me up for my last two events. Shot put was not so great, but just wanted to run my best and um, move up some spots in the 800, and that's what I did. So finished fourth and couldn't be happier. Great. Kendall? Yeah. Good question. Oh, <laughs> my day was uh, not like I was expecting. I mean, obviously coming back from NCAAs last week, I wasn't expecting to put up, you know, as great of a performance, obviously, but I would have liked to um, have been more solid throughout today. Um, I'm happy with my shot though, showing some consistency over 13 uh, finally. So um, yeah, but I'm just glad to have the experience, glad to be here. How, how was the recovery going from the last Oh week? man, yes. talk about massage every day, <laughs> chiropractor, like stretching, you know, a lot of sleep, eating right. It was definitely uh, an experience to come back uh, a week later and, and do it again, but um, I wouldn't have had it any other way. And uh, Barbara, how you're, you're a great 800 meter runner. How does it feel to also to probably have paced the, the the winner then uh, <laughs> in the event like that? Well, when I watched a replay of our last like 30 meters, and I came through the line smiling, like it was nothing like no bad remorse for re-beating me or anything. I just knew she was gonna be on me. I knew how, how fast she wanted to run and to get first place. And when I saw her come next to me, I was like, okay, let's push each other to that line. More me pushing her to the line. So um, I was really happy about that. I'm a big fan of Brie. And, and, and it says a lot just in general with how close uh, multi ventures tend to be. Yeah. Um, that yeah. You're, you're happy as much for her as you are for you. Oh, definitely. I know I always come out today at eight. And, um, when you know how many points you need to beat someone to, in order to move up spots, all, really all it takes right there and there is heart because you don't, you don't know how that person's going to feel. So for me, being much better than the eight these past um, year and a half, like it's such a big confidence booster going into the event. Like I can run really fast and it's a good shot of me doing that. So um, I mean, just, just a fun time out there. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.